I think it's a beautiful place, beautiful setting, the rolling hills. It has such a variety, it has such a, an opportunity for all kinds of, of education, it seems to me. We have our own culture center right here. Somebody says, are you traveling this summer? I said, no, I might miss something that's going on. It's for people who want individualized attention, um, the ability to do complex, advanced research with professors. And it's just a place where you can be your own person. It's a good thing for not just members of the university community, but for the entire community to come on over to the university. We're going to have some open houses. We're going to have opportunities for people to get to know the place. It's 50 years that it's been here, and there's so many people who don't recognize what has developed in their own backyard. I had a telephone call from Dr. Crawford, who was the vice chancellor of Syracuse University, and he asked me to come up and talk to him about a new college that Syracuse was getting ready to establish in the Triple Cities. And so I went up, to, went up there, and and decided I would take on the very difficult job of starting a new college. Well, I think it was well known that we were uh, a good institution, or would be anyway, and we were striving for that, and that we were uh, doing our best to keep the prices reasonable. So returning GIs could go ahead and finish their Education. When he got this community behind the idea that this would be the only liberal, the first liberal arts college of the state, it was an incredible accomplishment. I think one of the great things that Dr. Bartle did, but he did a wonderful job in selecting the first faculty and there was wonderful rapport. And so there we were now, really from scratch. I mean, no library, uh, ambitious plans, but a president who really had very exciting ideas. We had so little. An ex-city dump upon which somebody had built some Navy barracks. And, and there we taught. We had 200 slides in this uh, art history program. Today we have 200,000. And yet we taught. We had to wear coats and a scarf and a, a, a hat during the class because uh, if it was snowing and the wind was blowing, it would come in through the cracks and through the windows. It came to be, even while we were in the, pre in the prefabs and under terrible circumstances, it came to be a mark of honor for a, a student to be accepted to Harper. I learned a very valuable experience from those early years, and that is that you don't need to have a remarkable structure of stone and brick. It's the people that drive an institution, and we had wonderful people. determined that the class of 1960 would have a chance to uh, be on the campus at least for a few weeks. And we got out some boardwalks and uh, during spring vacation it turned out dry and warm and, uh, and we could actually walk around here without falling in the mud. In, in the 60s, the, much of the thrust for what needed to be done and what the aggravations were were centered about the Vietnam War. There was a lot of cooperation between students and faculty and administration at that time. One of my fondest recollections is the big march from the campus uh, led by President Deering and uh, most of the students, most of the faculty marching down from the campus over the Johnson City Bridge, down through the Main Street and down to downtown uh, uh, Binghamton in protest to the, to the Vietnam War. The mood on campus, however, was one of activism, not necessarily aimed at the Vietnam War. Uh, probably a repercussion of that, and there was some
questioning of authority, whether it was at the Washington level, the state level, the university level. It was there from 1985 to 1988. Um, there's lots of things that happened that really made you feel like you were part of the university community. Yeah. We're really blessed with a lot of fine facilities today, uh, many fine laboratories and, and the theater complex. If you walk around during the academic year and you look at the students and, and how they um, treat the campus. I think that student activism as opposed to apathy is a good sign. So I think that students being more involved in the policies that affect their lives is, is what's most important. I think President DeFleur has, been a wonder, has done a wonderful job. I think we're very fortunate to have her. It is really interesting to note that in the beginning, the community was the driving force in the establishment of the Harper College and then subsequently Binghamton University. We, in fact, are in uh, a strong role to help the community. People are always asking me, did you ever did you ever imagine that uh, the state, when you were planning the university, that it would be like it is now? And my answer is yes. I, uh, after it was accepted into the state university system in 1950, I knew it would be. I knew it would be a, 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 an important university unit. It still is an institution that is finding its own way, and it's doing a good job with that. I foresee great things uh, for Binghamton. I think the future is unlimited. I tell you, we say the grass is always greener, but it ain't. The grass is very green in our own backyard, and I have to say that a very large part of it is this university. Oh, soon he be we 